safety? What is safety? Maybe it's the control of the recognized hazards to an acceptable level of risk. Or maybe sa safety is just feeling protected from harm. Anyway, for Saab, safety is so important. It's actually the core innovation. Now let's talk about CBRN hazards, threats or events, whatever you want to call them. Remember, there's nothing like a small CBRN attack or an event or an hazard. Even a small CBRN threat that will create disturbance, fear. It will be disruption in society. We all remember in 1995 when the Japanese cult released the serene gas at the Tokyo subway. 13 people killed, 2,000 injured. But more recently they had the, the civil war in Syria where chemical weapons been used due to the fact that we have conventions today. But we have to remember, CBRN is not only used in wartime. CBRN are present in our daily society. We have the chemical factories. We have transport of dangerous goods. We have the nuclear power plants. I mean, we have seen Fukushima, what could happen there. But we also have the biological side. We have the epidemics. We have diseases, we have poison drinking water and more. So that's what we have, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear. And it's out there. But 30 years ago, the threat was a little bit different. The threat was wartime with lots of big nuclear threats and you have some chemical weapons. Even in the Second World War and we're still cleaning up after the Second World War. But many countries still, they act and behave as it was 30, 40 years ago, but the threats have changed. Today, we have accidents with chemicals, with CBRN assets. We have fires, we have explosive AODs. We have the terrorist threat, we have instability in regions and out in the world. And we have to ask ourselves, when the unthinkable happened, are we prepared? I will show you an example here. This is the serene gas. This is how it spread, appear and evolve. This is a chemical agent you see here in a city. It's a 10 meter of a second, 20 degrees out. And what you see here is the model that goes in double speed. Meaning what you see in one minute actually takes two minutes in real life. What will be the consequences if just this happens? And even a small amount will cause large disruption in the society. I mean, after such a large event, you will have mass casualties and you will have loss of lives. And even one life lost is one too many. But there will also be long-term effects, hazardous environments. Probably the whole society will be affected when a CBRN event, hazard, threat, attack happens. Every surveillance and healthcare authority, they need information and they need specialists talking to them. And they need information as fast as possible. So what can we do then? We have to think preparation, we have to think training, we have to think planning. And we need to think before, during and after the CBR event occurs. We're talking about crisis management for CBRM. For example, you can have networks of suitable sensors that keeps you monitoring and detection. They can be fixed, they can be mobile, or you can combine them. But the meaning here is the detectors should be directed to one point, a common point where the expertise are. It could be a monitoring system, or it could be an automotive warning and reporting system, or it could be a combination of two. But you have to think before how you use a monitoring system or automotive warning system before. It gives you a safe feeling because when the sensor is not giving you an alarm, it's all safe. And when something actually happens, it gives you the time you need to actually save lives. You get the speed to react. And also during the CBRN event, 
you get the real-time situation awareness. You can also follow what's happening. You get information out to all the authorities that need the information, from the military to the civil, because here we all have to work together. And after, if you have a monitoring out the body warning system, together with the sampling and the transport, you can do the check for the areas that could be have been contaminated. You can do the forensic sampling to collect proof and see what actually it was. And you can seal off areas that still contaminated. So, remember before, think crisis management, think training, think simulation to be prepared. When something happens in the CBRM world, it will affect the whole society. Even a small CBRM event will affect the civil society. Training, information, communication will definitely save lives and give that safety feeling back that we all need. So the conclusion, what is this? The CBR and threat, it's there. It's not common. It's very seldom. But when it happens, it will have large consequences and it will happen. So what can we do then? Yet so we think that Connected networks to sensors will definitely support you because the experts is few and they are spread all over. If we can collect all the information just in one point, we definitely will support your time to react. We can have, help you with decision support and correct information very fast. This will also give you the possibility to have fast and accurate decisions this will be the key factors to minimize the effects of the CBRM threat. But that's not all. You have to think prepare, you have to think training, you have to think simulation. It's not so easy to simulate a CBRM event, but we can do it today with the computers and support you. So on top of what you have said, you need a smart training and simulation tool in order to be prepared. Being prepared is all what it's about. And so we have connected sensors, we have connected networks, we have the training and we have the simulation too. And after my talk here, we will be ready to perform a demonstration uh, next to me here of the CBRN automatic warning simulation tool and also we have the training on board. So thank you for listening. Bye, 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 bye.